travel vlog. <laughs> this is everything that's happening in the lead up to my second ever professional golf tournament. We're playing a Carolina Mountain Tour event and dang it, that gas is like 40 cents cheaper. Playing a Carolina Mountain Tour event in Greenwood, South Carolina on Tuesday. It's currently Sunday and we're headed up to Augusta, Georgia to stay with my parents. Plan for the rest of the day. I'm gonna get there in about an hour and a half and uh, I don't really have a plan to be honest with you. I'm gonna finish up my yardage book and plan for the round. Then I wanna head to the, I, I wanna go to the lake this time. I wanna get my mind off of golf, just sit on the water and uh, vibe. The plan for Monday is to head over to one of the nicer courses in uh, the Augusta area and just, just get some putting in really. Uh, I've been putting on aerated greens for a week and a half, so I want to get back up to speed on some, some better greens before we head over to tournament greens. Um, I'm not going to play a practice round for this, this tournament. I have played this golf course before, once. Um, fun course. I'm excited to go back. Uh, it's just not, for being honest, it's just not financially sustainable for me to play a practice round in every event. Um, uh, maybe as we get further into this journey, but right now uh, we, we don't have any money to do that. As promised, we've arrived in Augusta for the night, well, the next two nights, I guess. Um, but I need to finish up my yardage book. So I make one of these yardage books um, for every tournament so far. And kind of the goal for me, and the main goal at least for creating these is really just to get a different view of the course. A lot of the courses just straight up sell yardage books, right? You can buy one, you can use Golf Logics, you can use 18 birdies, like there's plenty of other things I could be doing here. Um, and I know that, so don't accost me in the comments. Um, one, if you were to buy one of these, you're probably looking at at least 40 to $50. Like the yardage books they sell at the course are very expensive. So uh, the next best thing for me is Google Earth. It's free and relatively accurate. It's not exactly perfect, but as long as the course is relatively up to date on Google Earth, then you get a pretty good idea of what you're looking at. Uh, but I like to do it a little bit more old school. I don't know if you can call Google Earth old school, um, but compared to Golf Logics and 18 Birdies and that kind of stuff, uh, this is old school. Really, what I'm looking for here is carry distances of certain bunkers plus minus on how far the back of the green is from the middle uh, or how short I can go to the front of the green. I also have green maps. Um, this is hit or miss for me. I'm experimenting with golf logics. That's where I'm getting these greens from. I don't like having my phone on me during a round. I don't like having it open. Um, so I don't use golf logics on the app, but I use the app to get these drawings. This is very time consuming. And I do it right now because I, I just enjoy doing it. it fundamentally, just at the bottom, the bottom line is I just enjoy drawing out these courses. It's, it's kind of therapeutic in a way, where I'm just drawing out this course and going through it and kind of seeing the course come to life on the paper. Uh, that and, you know, growing up as a kid, I always wanted to, to have one of these yardage books uh, and feel like a pro. So now that I am a pro, um, it feels it feels right. So I guess that means we're on to the next part of the video, which is hopefully a quiet, relaxing day at the lake. You all thought this was going to be a regular video, didn't you? No deeper talks or pondering pontifications. Nah, in fairness, so did I. But that's what we get on the Ben Utah Golf Channel. Because my mind never stops. I came out here because I love how quiet it is, how peaceful. And I wanted to get my mind totally off of golf for tomorrow's tournament. And um, that's not happening. The feeling that I just can't seem to shake is one of fleeting confidence and uh, fading belief in myself. So I know I showed you the nine hole practice round I played at Crosswinds before we left to come here. And I just showed you the two hour putting 
that I did uh, over at Bartram Trail here in Augusta. And in both cases, I find myself staying out there longer than maybe I should, grasping for, reaching for, trying to hold on to this semblance of confidence. Sometimes I feel like if I could just put enough evidence on tape, if I could just hit enough good shots, then I would never be lacking for confidence. Then I would believe in myself. And unfortunately, it doesn't work like that. Last Thursday, I played in the member Blitz and shot 70, two under, one of my best scores of late. And really, I played well enough to shoot much better than that, but putts didn't fall for me. And so I wanted that to be the last round going into the tournament. I wanted to have that mindset. I wanted to hold on to that so that when things got difficult, I could reach for it and say, look, no, there's proof you are good. And so I was hesitant to even play that nine-hole practice round. But I did, and I played poorly, very poorly. One birdie in nine holes, quite a few bogeys. And I was frustrated by that. I thought, well, there goes my confidence. Now the only recent evidence I have is that I played bad. And I found myself doing the same thing in the putting green today. I was out there just trying to make putt after putt after putt, and I couldn't let good enough be good enough. I needed to be certain that I couldn't miss a putt, which is ridiculous. It's ludicrous. I'm going to miss a hundred million putts in my life. And yet I find myself staying out there hour after hour, seeking some semblance of certainty. And I think that's just how my brain works, searching for certainty. But I also think it's a fallacy. Because if I keep looking, and this is, look, this is not my own words, okay? This revelation does not come from myself. I'm not quite that self-aware. Uh, this is Kat influencing me very heavily here. She is, uh, amongst other things, girlfriend, caddy, photographer, also my mental coach at times. Um, and she's very good at doing that, despite it being maybe a conflict of interest. She helps provide insight where maybe I lack some perspective, and her, along with my, my therapist, have both said something to this effect of, at a certain point, I need to trust my own ability, my capability over certainty. And that's the only way that I'm going to move forward with this. I, I have to trust my swing, I have to trust my ability, even when the evidence is not there, even after I hit a bad shot. I need to be confident in my game regardless of how I just played. I have demonstrated to myself and to others that I am capable. I can hit good shots. I am a good golfer. But that's very hard for me to say and even harder for me to believe. Because the reality is if I went out and shot 59 every round, I still wouldn't believe. Because the next round could always be the one where the wheels fall off. The next time I go out could always be the one where things come undone. This is something we need to change. This is something we need to work on. Having confidence without needing certainty. Sounds like something my therapist and I have talked about before. Confidence in my ability over certainty of outcome. I've got to find some way to remain confident in my own ability to perform in adverse circumstances rather than having to be certain that the outcome will be okay. And so, really, if I can remind myself of anything and share anything with you about where I'm at in this journey at the moment, it's that I'm trying to cling on to confidence. And in reality, I should probably be clinging on to my own capability. Because that's a little more consistent and a little more helpful. But oh my lord, these boards are hot and I think it's time for me to shut the camera off. I think there's a little bit of uh, irony here with me coming up here to get my mind off of things and filming it, then filming myself looking like I'm actually relaxing while the camera's on and everything else is happening. So I'm actually gonna turn it off. I'm gonna turn my phone off and attempt to slow my mind and forget about golf for a little bit.